Most comic book fans are well aware of who Silver Surfer is. Silver Surfer, not him, is the Herald of Galactus, or the first of Galactus's heralds. So Galactus had about 12 different heralds. Those were people who were kind of his servants, he imbued with cosmic power. But like I said, if you're a fan of Marvel Comics, you know that Silver Surfer actually betrayed and left Galactus. And I said there were 12 other heralds. So who were they? Well, Terax here was one of those heralds. And my God, so many different heralds. You would think Galactus is probably a horrible boss to work for. Every single one quits and betrays him. Actually, I've had a lot more than 12 people quit. What does that say about me? As the Extreme channel is pushing towards 50,000 subscribers, these are just a few of the statues we are giving away on the journey there. If you want to know how to win one, stay tuned for later in the video. Hey, thanks for tuning into the Extreme channel. Today we are looking at a custom statue. That's right, this is a private unlicensed commission of none other than Terax the Tamer. So Terax the Tamer, as I said in the intro, is a Marvel character. Most well known as a short stint, he was the Herald of Galactus. So if you're unfamiliar who Galactus is, Galactus is this cosmic being who's not quite a god, but he's close to it, and he devours worlds for sustenance to actually stay alive. And he always needs a herald to kind of lead the way, find those planets for them, and he gives his heralds this amazing cosmic power. So Terax here didn't always look like this. He was kind of a ruthless leader. He looked very similar. He had a beard, but he didn't have the gray skin. And he had a mutant power, believe it or not. He could control rocks to an extent. Sounds pretty stupid, but kind of like that dude from the Labyrinth. Remember that? Big old hairy dude. I can't remember his name. Anyway, Galactus went through all these different heralds. They kept being guilt-stricken about destroying entire plants, so he thought, you know what? Let me find someone who doesn't have much morality. And that's when he went to Terax. And it was a success, because while Terax didn't have much morality, in fact, he actually slaughtered some planets for Galactus just for fun. He is a bad guy, so eventually he did betray Galactus multiple times. Now, the Fantastic Four was also involved with this because Galactus actually tricked them into subduing Terax before he became the Herald, and there's this whole storyline you can read yourself. However, today we're going to review this custom statue. Like I said, it's a private, unlicensed commission because I can tell you without a doubt this is the best Terax statue out there. In fact, it's the only Terax statue. So the reason why I purchased him, I'm a huge Silver Surfer fan. I'm going to put him with my Fantastic Four slash Silver Surfer collection. I think he's going to look great because this statue is really impressive. This is what I like when they do one-off characters that have never been done before. That's why I said it's the best Terex statue out there. I'm pretty sure it's the only one. But then when they knock it out of the park and really represent that character, I think it's a win times five. So let's dive into the traditional review. And before we do that, I'm going to grab the slab that I'm actually going to put him with. There's a few different slabs with Terex on it. Not many. But for now, I have one that has a few of the different heralds. We'll check that out too. All right, so this is actually part of a Silver Surfer miniseries. It was the Herald Ordeal, where they actually teamed up together. Now, many times in the comics, Silver Surfer and Terax are actually fighting. So I plan to display these together. But let's dive into this statue, and this is what we call a kiss statue. Keep it simple, stupid, or keep it stupid, simple. It's so simplistic, but it really works. Starting with the base, I wouldn't call this a museum style base, but there is definitely something going on. I like how they did this outer rim to kind of doll it up so it's not a boring planet. Normally, I don't like that, but I do. But then you see some type of asteroid or planet because he is a cosmic being. That's why he has his skin is gray. He can actually withstand the forces of space. This is his traditional comic look right here. And he's a big guy. We're going to measure him in a second, but absolute badass. And he's standing there in a museum style pose. Kind of looks like he's posing for a picture. Just looking badass as hell with his giant cosmic axe, which also has cosmic power in it. I really like this. I think they captured the character well. He's a little bit of a whiny baby sometimes, but most of the time he is an absolute badass. And that's what this statue screams of, badassery. So I give the concept, while it's simple and a little boring maybe, it's still a 4 out of 5. I really like it. It just screams Terax. Now let's talk about the design again. Very, very simplistic. Before we look at the simple unboxing and assembly, let's measure him. So I love he doesn't take up too much room. The diameter is about 13 inches of the base, and he is just over 26 inches high. 
Now what's really interesting is I remember, I thought this was only gonna be 22 inches high. Now it looks like that's how tall he is, but with the ax, you put an extra four inches on there. And to some people, four inches is a lot. That's what she said. <clears throat> it's not very complicated, so the box was a very manageable size. It did have a cool comic art box on it. Standard custom black foam and straps. It had two different layers. The first layer had Terax and his right arm and axe. The second layer was the remaining pieces. So you only have one different display option. There's two different portraits. I would have liked something different with the hands. Although I'm speculating if there was, you know, like the ax hanging down to the side, I would rather display this. But again, it would have saved that height space, especially since a lot of display cabinets are 24 inches. So I do have to rethink where I'm actually gonna put him because I didn't know he was this tall. But the two different display options are two different portraits. First is this one where he's gritting and baring his teeth. I thought this would be my favorite. Because this other one, where he just has a frowny face, I think looks a little bit better, but they're both fantastic. So I'm keeping both of them out of the box because I might interchange from time to time. But very simple assembly, not really a lot going on to design. So because it's not too complicated, I give it a three out of five. I probably would have given it a four out of five if you had a different ax display option. Paint and sculpt. They did really good on him. I am really impressed. It's incredibly clean and the textures just look fantastic and I think they captured him well. Check it out. All right, I wanna look at the portraits first. So here's that grumpy face. Looks looks a little weird not on him. On him is where it really looks better in my opinion, but I love the clean paint, not only on this portrait, but you're gonna see it everywhere. And I think they did a nice job sculpting a guy who's essentially kind of made of stone or has a stone-like skin. The eyes, really clean paint on those. You're gonna see it on both. Now, they did a great job accentuating the teeth. They're a slightly different color which I think helps it flow more. And I love that you have this shine, but kind of these battle damage aspects to his uh, helmet armor down here that covers up where his beard was. The outside of this base, like I said, it's not a typical black museum style uh, sub base here, but it kind of gives you a cosmic effect, which I like. So I think I like the paint better than I do kind of the scratches. If it was clean, I think I would have liked that better, but I understand why they did the scratches. It kind of goes with Terax himself. They did an amazing job on the planetary surface. Uh, this looks great. I love the texture. I love the brown and gray coloring they put in there. All these uh, uh, pit holes look absolutely fantastic. That looks really, really good in my opinion. Now on Terax, let's look at his skin first. Like I said, it's kind of this rock-like skin that Galactus transformed him into. He had a different color skin before that, but this hardened it so he could withstand space. So it kind of looks like a mix between uh, rocks and skin together. You can see the anatomy, huge quads. Same thing with his biceps and, and triceps down there. So I like how they followed uh, you know, humanoid anatomy, but still uh, gave it this really uh, rock-like uh, aspect to it. Really impressive. And I like that the gray is a lot lighter than some of the grays down here. It differentiates it well. His armor has uh, some parts that have a little bit of a dull shine to them. I know that's kind of an oxymoron, but uh, so his shoulder pads up here and then tons of battle damage because he is a warrior. So I like that a lot. Some scarring, some scratches. And this red doesn't, it's not too bright. So it, it fits with the rest of the statue. Where his boots, the red on there with a lot of black shading, are more like a leather-like material. You can see the folds and the creases in there. But then armor on the front, kind of this arrow pattern going down, and it has a slight shine to it, so it differentiates from the boots. And same thing with the gold. So it's kind of this dulled um, metallic shine that sometimes you see, sometimes you don't. Now, what's interesting on here is it has this red scoring. I'm not a huge fan of that. 
Um, it's done well. I, I don't necessarily like the direction of it, uh, but it, it helps transcend and, and mix in with the other colors. So then he has his dress, a little bit of a, a textured pattern in there, and then again, kind of that leather feeling. And again, it's very battle damage, very scored metal plate on the front. You can see some of that uh, honeycomb texture. It's all, Now, it's not really a honeycomb, but just small square texture in there and huge, huge obliques and uh, looks like what I want to look like. And the gloves were leather. Again, some folds, a lot of the same comments. Now the ax looks great. So this is polystone and it looks like a real ax. And I, I think that's, that's difficult for people to do nowadays to make swords and axes look real without having them actual metal. But they did a really nice job on this. And again, different patterns on the actual ax so it's not boring. I really like it. They did a very nice job on the paint and sculpt of this piece. I'm gonna give the paint a five out of five. I am really impressed. Like I said, the only thing I would have improved is this outer thing, but I kind of like the cosmic effect like we talked about. I really like it. Sculpt is not equally impressive, but also very impressive. I think it's definitely above average. I'm gonna give it a four out of five on the sculpt. They did a really nice job capturing this character. Now, is this worth it? Probably not to most people. Like I said, this really complements a Fantastic Four display or a Silver Surfer display, or if you're having a Galactus like you've seen in some of those other pictures I had, get all of his heralds around him. So I don't think there's a lot of people out there that have those types of statue displays. Because this is a little pricey. It's a thousand bucks. It's a bigger quarter scale. So quarter scale means four times smaller than a real life version. They made 50 of these. So it's very rare. And I can guarantee you, unless he enters the MCU, which I honestly don't see happening, this guy, while he's been in comics and some of the cartoons, both Fantastic Four, he's fought the Avengers before, I don't see his popularity growing huge. So while I think it's a really good value, I think due to the popularity of the character, at best the value is a three out of five. I could probably get my money back. Like I said, he was $1,000 plus a couple hundred dollars shipping. Now does he have the X Factor? Is he a five out of five statue? Simple museum pose, an underrated, less known character. I think automatically that takes away the five out of five, the X Factor possibility, but I still think it's a four out of five. I like this a lot better than I thought I would. Now I got it because I'm a fan of Terax and I knew they'd never do another Terax statue, but I think if they ever do in that rare circumstance, it'll be tough to beat this one. This one's done really well. So the real question I want you to comment on today, did you even know who Terax is? Throw that in the comments below. I love to. I would love to see the popularity or lack of popularity of this guy. I'd love to read your comments and you could win a statue. We will be giving all of these statues away plus additional ones at every 5,000 subscriber milestone. To win one of these statues, all you have to do is make sure you've liked this video, you've subscribed to the channel, you've hit that bell notification, and then just drop a comment below. Every 5,000 subscriber milestone, we are going to do a random drawing and pick a random comment and give one of these statues away, plus some additional ones I'm not showing right now. The more videos you comment on, the higher your chances are to win. Hey, thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Please hit that like button. It's free and easy, and uh, Terax will come get you if you don't. They should subscribe too. Gotta do it.